Joy Harrington. I am your host coming to you from La Mesa, California. We are still traveling right now and seeing beautiful California for about another uh, six days. And then we go back to Arizona for a little bit. But anyways, something that's been coming up a lot with my clients. And then also I've been talking about this on Instagram is the topic of resistance. And something that really trips people up is when they feel resistance come up for something that they're wanting to incorporate, be that a new habit, a new routine, a new response, changing a pattern, building a business in their relationship with their significant other, whatever it is, we jump to the conclusion of, oh, well, because I feel resistance to it, it must not be for me. We throw this like automatic label onto it of like, oh, that's a sign that it's not for me because I wouldn't have this resistance if it was truly for me. And I think this is something that has been taught incorrectly when it comes to the business world. And I think there just needs to be a differentiation here because I don't think it's people mean to teach this incorrectly. I think there just needs to be a differentiation here because resistance, true resistance, where you have something new that you want to incorporate. You know you want to change a pattern. You know you want to change a habit. You know you want to change something in your relationship or change a business or whatever it is. And resistance comes up where you feel like this, I don't want to. Uh, that feels really uncomfortable. Oh, that confronts these stories in me, whatever it is. That resistance is actually a sign that you're on the right track. That tells me that we're actually confronting the stuff that's been holding you hostage because there are stories running the show. There are things going on inside of you subconsciously that you're not even aware of. And until you confront them, you will stay doing what you've been doing. And every time you stay doing what you've been doing, you will continue to get the same results. And so if you want something different in your marriage, in your business, whatever it is, you're going to have to do something completely uncomfortable that you feel resistant to. It's not going to feel good. It's not going to feel great. Here's why. We are accustomed to a certain set of habits, routines, patterns, behaviors, beliefs, whatever it is. We are accustomed to them. They feel comfortable to us. They feel normal. What feels comfortable or what feels, I should say, habitual is what feels comfortable. What we've always known is what feels comfortable. Unknown feels very uncomfortable, but it doesn't mean it's not the right thing. Just because it's known, just because it's a habit doesn't mean you want to keep it doesn't mean it's what you want to keep doing for forever. And so when it's uncomfortable and you go, oh, this is really uncomfortable, that's your sign you're on the right track because I guarantee you want a different outcome. If you were happy with your outcomes, you could keep doing what you've been doing. If you're not happy with your outcomes, you have to do something different and something different will always feel uncomfortable because it's unknown, because it's different, because it's typically going against what we've let ourselves do 150, 200 times before that, right? We are going to bump up against our flesh. We're going to bump up against our selfishness. We're going to bump up against our pride. We're going to bump up against our ego our routines, our patterns, we're going to really bump up against our comfort and our comfort zone when we start to do new things in order to break patterns, change habits, create something new and different. And our opportunity is to lean in and keep doing it despite the uncomfortability. But a lot of people get tripped up here because they feel uncomfortable. And so they go, that must mean I'm on the wrong track because if it was the right thing for me, it would feel good. It's just supposed to feel good all the time. Here's where I want to differentiate between feeling and intuition. Intuition goes, this feels really uncomfortable, but I know I need to do this because this is actually in my gut what I'm hearing that I need to lean into. Feelings are emotions that come up and say, ooh, I don't like this because I want to be selfish or I want to be prideful or I want to be safe or I want to be whatever it is. I want to look good, right? They're, they typically come from some sort of a wound or something in our past where we're trying to protect ourselves or we're trying to not have people think a certain way of us, like whatever it is, we're, we're trying to control some sort of external circumstance or we're trying to control something that we won't have to feel. And when you follow your feelings, you will stay doing what you've always been doing and you will stay in unhealthy patterns because your feelings are not your friend. 
Your feelings can tell you things about yourself. They can reveal stories to you that you've been believing. They can reveal stuff that's hidden in your body, right? They can reveal a lot of things to you, but they are not your friend and they're actually not you. We too often wrap ourselves up in our thoughts and our feelings, and we think that's who we are, but we are not our thoughts or our feelings. And until we learn to step outside of those and actually intentionally step into new action that we know is going to generate new thoughts and new feelings, we will just keep spinning in the same cycles and the same patterns and the same beliefs and stay the average of what we've been for the rest of our life. So this is where you get to look at your life and say, do I want to keep generating the income I've been generating? Am I happy with that as my average? Am I happy with my relationship where it is right now as my average? Am I happy with my business right now as average? Because unless I do drastic things to start making myself uncomfortable and start generating resistance in my life, I'm just going to keep doing what's comfortable and I will continue producing average. You got to get uncomfortable if you don't want average. You have to get super, super uncomfortable if you want to start getting bigger results. Because the more uncomfortable you get, the more stories you're confronting, the more beliefs that you're shifting, the more you are starting to take opposite action and create opposite beliefs. And you'll be able to then create results that reflect that opposite action and those opposite beliefs. But we are the generator. You have to remember that we are the generator. We don't wait for those things to happen to us. We create them. Everything in your life right now, you are creating whether you know it or not. You're creating the amount of money you make. You're creating the relationship you have. You're creating the life that you have based on the beliefs you have and based on you staying inside your comfort zone with those beliefs. You've got to get out of your comfort zone. So I invite you to actually bring resistance in. Ask yourself, what would be the scary thing for me to do in my business? What would be the scary thing for me to do in my relationship? What would be the scary, uncomfortable thing for me to do in this pattern? Typically, when we're changing a pattern, it does not feel good. It does not feel good because our pattern is probably one where we take the easy way out or we get to do what we feel like or we get to do whatever it is. And when we're changing a pattern, we're going to do the opposite behavior and the opposite behavior feels scary. Opposite behavior feels vulnerable. Opposite behavior feels frustrating. It doesn't feel good, but that doesn't mean that it's wrong. It actually means that it's right. You are bumping up against wake. Every time you're on a boat heading one direction, you decide to turn around and go the other direction, you're going to hit wake. If you are deciding to turn around and change direction, you're going to hit wake. That's not a sign that it's wrong. That's a sign that you're going the right direction. It just means, hey, I changed my mind. And P.S., if you've been driving for two hours down the wrong road, is it a waste of time to say, oh my gosh, I realize I've been going two hours down the wrong road. I need to turn around. Or is it you know, better for you to just keep going down that wrong road because you don't want to quote unquote waste what you've put in so far. We all know, like if you were actually doing that, turning around, going back is the best answer. That's actually going to be what gives you better results than just keep going down the road that's wrong. Don't hesitate to turn around and go down a different road like that. Successful people do that like that all the time. They make it a fast decision. If they know immediately something is wrong road, they change like that. They do not hold on to, oh, but I'll have wasted so much time or I'll have wasted all this, whatever. They don't care. They just know they need to get onto the right road because continuing down a wrong road will never make it a right road. It'll just stay a wrong road and you'll just keep putting more miles behind you on the wrong road, which gives you more time to make up. Lean into resistance. Resistance is a good sign. One way that I've been doing that this year, I felt resistance when I joined Monate. I had old stories coming up. I had to confront old things. And I realized the resistance was coming up because I was looking at things right now and I was forgetting long-term vision. And I was trying to convince myself that I was still happy with what I had, even though I know deep down I'm not. And so I had to get really honest about what I do want and what's a hell yes for me and what's not. And what's my long-term vision instead of short-term gain. And so I want to invite you to lean in and invite resistance into your life. And where have you been resisting resistance? Invite that into your life.
I will see you back on the show next week. Share this with a friend if this was helpful for you or tag me on Instagram. I would love to hear your takeaway and what you love from the podcast. And if you are looking to build more residual income, have some freaking fun and build a machine that works for you. That's going to be bringing you income instead of trading your time for dollars. I would love to chat with you about Monate over on Instagram. It's at joyharrington.ig. I am building a fully feminine team over there where we are doing things in a different God-led way. And we are healing our feminine side and building a business in a beautiful way that glorifies him. And that allows us to thrive in our feminine role, right? I'll see you over on Instagram. Have a beautiful week, you guys. 